everyone and welcome back to ExtremeRigs.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at Swiftex water block for the GTX 980. Uh, this is for a reference compatible uh, circuit board. This is a reference compatible circuit board with the EVGA ACX cooler. Not everyone knows that this is compatible, but it is. So let's take a look at the Swiftex block itself. Uh, as you can see, it is a pretty big and chunky block. Uh, it covers the entire PCB, with the exception of cutouts for the uh, DVI header and the power. Uh, as you can see, it has this pretty big chunky section that is the feed. So you have the input and output ports here. Either can be input or output, it doesn't matter. And then you have this little window here that shows the uh, cooling engine, which you can just about see there. And that's actually quite small. Underneath you have this little hidden panel, which is really hard to see. Um, and in there are some LED strips. And then you can mount a little piece of plastic in there, like a color gel. Uh, and that changes the color of the LEDs. Now these LEDs, they're actually powered um, by a little header here and that plugs into your fan uh, header on the PCB, so that's really nice. Um, a lot of blocks, for example, XSPC comes with LEDs, but they're not even attached to the block. They come with a Molex header, so you have to bring in Molex power for them and you have to mount them yourself. So the fact that these are pre-mounted, pre-wired, and they make use of the existing uh, header on the PCB for power is great. Um, the surface of the block here, this is a kind of a brushed aluminum finish. And then underneath the, the cooling is, it's actually copper, it looks like chrome here because it is chrome plated. Um, you know, some manufacturers use nickel plating instead when they want this silvery look. Chrome just gives you a bit more of that polished and clean look. Uh, and you'll also see two different kinds of therm thermal pads on here. You have some blue, it's really white with a blue plastic covering, and then some kind of brownie gray thermal pads. And you'll see that they cover parts of the VRM section, some other random chips, and the memory modules. And then you have the uh, graphics core in the middle here. Uh, this time around, SwiftTech did not include a backplate. Typically they have included one. And so the price is somewhat lower to reflect that. Uh, the other feature that this has is the little text on here and the logo. So it says uh, liquid cooled GeForce GTX 900 series and then it has the Swift Deck logo. Uh, and that actually lights up the LED shine through the block and, and so whatever color you choose for the block uh, also gets you know passed through to here so that's kind of a nice feature but the end result of this thing is really quite bulky so you know the aesthetics definitely could be improved um, we do prefer a clean simpler look and to that end SwiftTech have now released a, a fully plexi version I forget what they call it this is called the luxury edition I think that's called the eco edition or I don't know but it's basically, you lose the, um, the brushed aluminum look and this chunky bridge gets slimmed down. It still is wide, but it's not quite as, as fat. So we actually kind of prefer that look. The problem with that design is that because this cooling engine is quite small, because this path is quite small, it does end up looking quite empty. So enough about the actual looks, how does it mount? Um, some of the things we do like about the Swift Tech, it is the only block that uses these screw holes uh, on the end of the PCI bridge. So if we get the card back, uh, well it's not in this one, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, this one doesn't have it, but maybe on a, refer a true reference NVIDIA card it would have it. But essentially that means that you know, this plate should be able to be screwed into the actual block. So it gives it a bit more support and it means it's a bit less likely to sag because of that. In addition, you do have holes down the end to also screw the end of the card 
down into so the more contact points you have again the less likely the card is to sag you know it's all going to be held a bit more together um, this is compatible with the um, reference backplate that comes with it on the actual NVIDIA made cards um, the thing we didn't like about mounting it there's an awful lot of screws Swiftec has about six different types of screws you have some for mounting under the back plate, some for mounting different areas, some for mounting on top of the back plate, some for mounting into here, some for mounting into there. Six different types. And along with those, there's washers, there's nuts. Um, and some of the washers we were supposed to have weren't even included. So it ends up being a bit of a mess in terms of, you know, simplistic design. We like, we love blocks, in fact, when there's only one type of screw. Because why do you need more? You shouldn't need more. Keep it simple, keep it easy, and you're less likely to, to miss one part in the box when you're shipping it out. Uh, so that was a negative. Um, let's move on to the performance. You know, Swiftec, uh, for a long time, they were making the most um, restriction-free blocks out there. This one is not quite uh, as low flow as that, but it's very, it's still very much low flow and it's still very good on that front. Um, but I think bits power is generally slightly better. Uh, the other two metrics of performance are really core cooling and VRM cooling. Traditionally on the last two blocks we've received from SwiftTech, VRM cooling has been very weak. However, on the GTX 980, it's a very low power card and it, you know, NVIDIA really also clamped the power down quite a bit. So it's a low power card and then we can't even overclock it very much. So in that sense, all of our numbers were low. Our core cooling was low, our VRAM cooling was low. Uh, SwiftTech did not have the worst performance on the VRM cooling. That was of course AlphaCall who don't have the full cover block like this. So that wasn't a surprise for them. We were really hoping SwiftTech would improve their VRM temperatures this time and they did not. As for core cooling, uh, they really did kind of average in the middle of the pack. Um, and that was a surprise too, because typically Swift Tech always did the best. This time, however, EK stepped up their game and you know, Alpha Cool's um, separate core cooler is really, really good at core cooling. So in summary, we're not a huge fan of the look. Uh, we're not a huge fan of the mounting hardware. The core cooling is average. The VRM cooling is sub-average. Um, the restriction is is good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to say really. I'm not. I'm still not that impressed with Swift Deck. Um, every time I get one of these, I'm really hoping that this time they've listened and they've taken the feedback, and rather than being defensive about it, they just said, "Look, okay, we can improve those things." but they haven't. So again, again, if they'd taken the feedback from previous reviews, this would have been a better block, but it's not. So with a lot of these options, I would always say, you know, uh, it's still good, you can still buy it. This one, I'm more disappointed by. Uh, and I think there are better options out there. Sorry, Swift Tech. You got some work to do to improve this. So that's really it for me on these, uh, on the Swift Tech block. We are going to be back with more reviews on the other blogs soon. Uh, so that's it from me. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.